Yeah, he's about to go to Space Mountain. About to eat the Mario mushrooms. Dude, 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 What's up, man? Dude. What's going on? How you doing? Man, How you been? Great, man. Great, great, awesome fucking weekend, bro. Let me tell you. Spent a shit ton of money on my kids on Orlando. Nah, that's what, that's what think, literally just happened. I just think you have so much money you don't know where to put it. No, I don't have so much money. I just fucking it's this 16th oh, right. birthday party of a fucking teenager that had me take him to fucking Orlando. You got remember we can, for just for him to have a fucking monotone face of everything. Some that's, of the most that's how his face comes. Can also, uh, like, I said, that's how his face comes. Let me ask you a question. I, I know. Do you remember the show, My Super Sweet 16? Yeah, I remember that show. Right. Fucking Diddy. Diddy is the reason niggas has 16 birthday parties for boys, because that was never a thing. And then Diddy did one for um, I'll Be Sure's son, which is his son. And fucking wait, what? Her. Wait, wait. Yeah, he did one for I'll be sure son. And then what's the sentence you said after that? That was which also is his son. He raised I'll be sure son. Oh, okay. I need you to clarify yeah, certain yeah. things when you yeah. say it. Tell me, I'm I mean, tell me you're not I'm wrong. wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm not wasn't lying. He's the reason that episode's the reason boys think they're entitled to a 16th birthday party. That ain't my like, baby. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> What would you do if you could have a 16th birthday party right now? What would what would like what type of shit would you have back in your day at a sweet 16 birthday party for yourself? Elephants? Nah, bro. I don't, I'm not even that type of fucking dude. So it's just been a what? fucking Pro- prostitutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. probably some strippers. Yeah. I probably got some strippers. No, 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 not strippers. Prostitutes. prostitutes. Yeah, the dirty ones. High, 16. high in high in prostitutes. No, no <laughs> From Atlantic ones. City. No, from, Kensington. from Kensington. Yo, no. you're the only nigga. No. Yeah, you're the only nigga that had prostitutes flown in from Kensington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right, they be flown in right on New Jersey <laughs> Transit, my nigga. Hey, whatever floats your boat. They come on that purple, that purple and blue bus. <laughs> yeah, shit. That, that that's the thing, man. I fucking realized, like, I got this gap. I got this weird gap of like two little babies, and then I got all these fucking adult kids now. Yeah. One, You'll never one. not be a parent of younger children. Uh, exactly. So You'll be 80 years old with an infant. No, I won't. I'm not doing that no more. So I got uh, like a, I got 21, 19, 17, about to be 18, 16, 14, about to be 15, and then fucking seven and three. You ever think but I'm here. getting a procedure? Nah, no. I'm good. You say, I don't need to. I'm not. Why I'm not, not? Leaving your brother got one. Why can't not, you get one? I'm, he's good. He's he fine, ride, isn't he? he? He couldn't ride a bike for like two days. Couldn't even sit in his car. Oh, mm, got to put the donut. In the All seat. right, listen. I got to go back to work, so I got to mm-hmm. ride in a rough ass truck, and I, I got like take off. So work only a, more babies. Only a, yeah, whatever. No, no if, more babies. If you whatever. have more babies, you'll be working forever. Yeah. No, I'm I'm good. I'm good. So um. But I'm talking about. I'm here to talk about not my having more babies. I'm talking here to talk about my fucking adult kids and kid man. How adult? How how having raising a uh, having a kid as an adult now is a fucking wholly totally different fucking thing than babies. Like my babies, like I can still put fear in the motherfuckers. It's still like, hey, sit down. Don't eat that. Don't touch that. Don't do that. Watch this. Watch that. Where I got this now. I got this twenty one year old daughter. Then somebody said, hey, um, don't go on your daughter's Instagram page after Halloween. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, she had the confidence to pull that outfit off. Is this something that happened? Or? Yeah, this is that it happened. I just had to exhale. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't even want to see it. I don't even want to know about it. She's grown. She's an adult. Does That's so what. so does and I'm only I'm 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 really asking this more so I can have the experience when I get to the point where I have a kid that's 21 or older. Um, do you find yourself um, holding back from what you sh- think you should say just because she is an adult now? At no, I don't hold. Question. I don't necessarily hold back what I say, but it's not like when your daughter was 15 and you can have a hey why did you wear that conversation like that's fucking inappropriate you're not 
put nothing on like that. Do not let me catch you or nothing like that. That's not how I raise you. You can't have that conversation with me. You can the conversation now is like you just either fucking avoid it or if you see it in it, like yo, come on. Like one time she wore a two piece bathing suit. This is when she was twenty. I say yo, last year. Break some. Yeah, last year. So I say yo, let me break something down to you. Like I got. My brother's here, your uncles, your, your my uncle's here, your grandmother, like this ain't you don't wear that bathing suit around. Yo, uh, real this quick, type you of, think a two piece bathing suit is, is inappropriate. Nah, bro. Your ass cheeks is hanging out is inappropriate. Okay, okay. two piece thong bathing suit? Exactly. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. my daughter 13, she wears a two piece bathing so suit. I didn't even like yeah, yeah. thong bathing suit ever. If they made two piece yeah. for men, I would wear it. Yeah, I, my kids like my daughter always had a one piece for a kid. I they I do still yeah. believe I don't. I yeah. So, so we'll I'm, I had to break it down. I'm like, yo, I said it's cool to have a baby. So I understand you got the body showed off, but don't do that in this group setting. That's for now, you by you yourself with that? your girl. I'm serious. How did you approach that? I, Probably the exact way he just said it just now. No, I mean, nah. like, did you pull her to the side or did you? Yeah, like, I pulled to the side. I, like, I said, I said, I said, I pulled to the side. I said, let me. I said, can I have a conversation with you? I said, I, I was like, I understand that you know you're you're grown and you like to express yourself, but out of respect for me, your brothers, your grandmother, your uncle, your great uncle here, like, that's not an appropriate baby suit for this type of setting, like. Can you okay. you know what I mean? When you're around these, these are men who watch you as a kid. Like, I don't want them seeing you in that light. I say, would you do with you and your friends and all that? I really can't say nothing. You know, if I see you in that setting, I probably I said I'll remove myself from that area. You know what I'm saying? I'll remove myself from my setting, that setting because that's you and your friends. I shouldn't be there anyway. But like this is more family or Like I, I can understand you wearing a baby suit, but just more wear something more, a little bit more, you know, family friendly. Nobody wants to see. You know, when my older cousins used to go out with their baby suits, they wouldn't, you know, their ass is not out. They got their two-piece baby suit on, but their ass and everything is not exposed. Like, you, you don't want to see that. That's, that's your little cousin. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's my, that's you know, that's my niece or whatever. That's I understand she's grown, but I don't want to see that, you know. Yeah. When, when you go you to she started pushing the boundaries? Man, listen. By like kids normally. Well, she never pushed the boundary when she lived with me. She was always respectful of me. So I guess by me, like, by me, yeah, by me keeping the fucking, the leash on the situation is like, all right, I get to express myself. So I don't, when she does that, I don't challenge that shit. Motherfucker say, yo, when they was telling me about the Halloween costume, I, I, this is my first time mentioning it on the podcast. I don't. It's like I'm not gonna see it. I don't care about it. It's nothing for really for me to be concerned about because she came home safe and nothing happened to her, you know, and she felt comfortable enough to wear it. Like, what can I really say about that situation? She's fucking 21 years old. Like, could you share what the costume was? Just what it was. I don't even know. I didn't look at it. They just said oh, it was okay. very revealing. They just said it was very revealing. It was a lot of shit exposed. I didn't even want to go see it because it's my daughter. You gotta understand. understand. Yeah. I'm that good. is still in my eyes, <laughs> my baby. And y'all know the situation. I, you know, I raised, I had her since birth. It's been me and her running hip to hip since birth, you know? Yeah. With every situation with her mom, but it, it, me and her hip to hip. Y'all helped me raise her. Y'all been around her. Y'all, you know, y'all like your uncles to her and everything. She looks at you like un uncles and y'all look at her like as, as a niece and or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. When they get that old, it's more or less the conversations you're having is not so much the chastising type and, and, and all this other shit. Is is life lessons, is what you've been through. And you're not telling them, hey, do this. But you're just telling them stories from what you did and hopefully they catch on and like, all right, you know. I'm trying to give out that fatherly advice. Advice. <laughs> I, feel all like, it is. Uh, I feel like it's it's a hard line to walk, right? Because at one at, at on one aspect of it, you are the father, and you still feel as though your fatherly duties aren't completely done yet. You know, there's even if she's twenty one, she doesn't have the life experience to know how to deal with certain scenarios and situations. 
that you would or that you've seen or that you've been through, whatever the case may be. But on the other aspect, you still want to be able to give that freedom for them to be able to learn life and learn what's acceptable and not acceptable within their own terms. But I feel like a, when it's your kid between the ages of 20 and 24, I think that me personally, it's totally okay for you to voice your opinion on how someone um, brings uh, their public appearances could be or the type of attention they may try to be seeking or, you know, the type of life that they're living. It's I feel like it's your job still to weigh in on these options that they're still, you know, given. And, yeah, you letting them make the decision at the end of the day. But when they're between the ages of 20 and 24, when they still do things that um, you feel as though is inappropriate or, you know, they're that shit that they're just not supposed to do, you feel like you're like kind of still failing in a sense. Like, nah, you know, this isn't how I kind of, this isn't how I raise you to do certain things. You know what I mean? And, and one, you don't want to be embarrassed as a parent, period. You don't want your child to embarrass you, especially when you inflict certain um, values in their life that you hold near and dear to you and your family. And when you start seeing them go astray from things that you're not used to, because we're all older, you know what I mean? We don't live the same type of lifestyles that the younger people live now. We didn't live that type of lifestyle when we were young. Things evolve, things change, everything gets done differently between different eras. But I feel as though that's still, it's it's like, it's like when you have a child and they're between the ages of two and six and you're teaching them how to talk and certain things to say and certain things to do when they're still learning and they're still like a sponge. I feel like between 18 and 24 is the adult version of that. Yo, you don't know what this, this style of life is like. You've left your, you've been a kid all the way up until now. And now what it's- about when, What about when y'all kids- but the, oh, um, Hold up, Dre, hold up. Resist to that. Oh, sorry. That, but no, that, that I'm, exactly. Resist to that, right? I, but let me reverse that, Kev. There was a point in your time at 20 to 24, you wouldn't try to hear shit your dad was talking about. Yeah, and and and, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you 100 percent 100 percent in this day, a lot of the shit that my parents told me as an adult at 40 years old right now, they were fucking right. Mm -hmm. It takes you to be a fucking adult and actually sit back and and remember the things that they said and then remember what you went through and be like. Being a kid, you're we're just idiots. You know what I mean? Like Use if I had to actually young. take it, taking advantage of what they were telling me, I, who knows the si situation I could be in now? Could have been way better. You know what I mean? I don't. I we we you'll never really know. But you see that delicate fine line you're trying to walk as a parent of them taking that information instead of discarding it, like some of the shit we did. Like, how would you do? It? How would you go about it? How I'm a conversational you? person when it comes to my kids. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to just, there's certain things that's just, just, you know, there's no, um, there's no banter back and forth about. If I say this is what it is, and that's what it is. But that's because you're 13 years old. That's because you're seven, eight years old. You know what I mean? Like, but even then, I like to have actual conversations with my kids to let them know, like, Yo, I'm not here to, this isn't a moment of me chastising. I want this to be more of a teachable moment within conversation. So hopefully we can open up a dialogue where you're explaining to me on why you're doing things the way that you're doing. And maybe I can peek in and kind of see where your point of view is instead of me just putting my foot down and telling you, yo, this is my house. This is my, you under my roof. This is how shit's going to go, period. It might not work out for you that way all the time because... I don't go through the same things mentally that you may go through. I don't have the same exact thought process. I don't watch what you watch or listen to what you listen to. So maybe you can open up some dialogue to me on and explain to me why some of these decisions that you made, why you've taken this route instead of taking this route. And I'd rather it be an eye opener because of her being able to see a mistake on her own 
than me just telling her she's making mistakes and not being able to do it and be like, damn, I should have listened. Because if you make the mistake after I after I kind of we had a conversation and you still make the mistake, you're realizing that I was right. I kind of I do know more than what you think I know because I'm an adult. You know what I'm saying? And it gives me the upper hand in any other future situations because I'm the type of person to resort back to this. Yo, remember when you did that? How did it work out for you? It didn't work out right. Right. And what did I say do? Now, do you are you sure that you want to take that route and not listen to me? Because many, if you do, you could be stuck in the same, you know, what I mean, another many, situation like you were before. How many times do you guys think your kids have to bump their head before they go back and say, you know what, dad, you were right, or mom, you were right? I think it depends on the kid, the kid and the parent. You know, what I mean, it depends on the dynamic of, of how their relationship is. If were you kid stupid? Rebellious, because I, I mean, was stupid. I was fucking yeah. an idiot. All I, was stupid. I was stupid. I was stupid. You know shit. what? Yeah. I was dumb, but but there was there's still always dumb. a person to still dumb. Still yeah, dumb. I'm still dumb. You know what I mean? But there was always a person that their advice weighed more on you than another person, adult wise. And for me, it was my grandfather. No matter what anybody else told me, I could be doing the opposite unless that man said. Hey, yo, why, yo, you should be doing this like this. He held th enough, enough weight to make a person like myself change my mind about something that I already wanted to do. Maybe I, you know what I'm saying? It, maybe just, I just didn't want to disappoint him at the end of the day. You know what my I mean? Grand, and, my and, grandma and, Joyce is that for me. She yeah. says something to me, I feel like this big and like. I'm yeah, this. you know what I mean? And And what made my grandfather so powerful is that he could express to me in his discipline. He could express to me how angry he was, how disappointed he was, and wouldn't yell, wouldn't. You couldn't even tell that he was upset. It sounded more like he was hurt. And mm -hmm. that is of what course. affected me the most. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble. People going to get mad. Somebody going to yell at me. When you a kid, I'm not going to lie to you. After a while, you get used to that. I'm going to get yelled at. We've taken plenty of chances, Kev knowing that we was going to get in trouble if we got caught. But at that yeah. point, it's like, fuck it. You know what I mean? But when you hurt the person that you consider to be the most powerful person in your life at the time, it weighs in differently. You know what I mean? But see, that's the relationship I got with my daughter now. She had, she had came to my house one day. I mean, I could see, like, I could visibly see she was, she was upset. And I'm just sitting there. She just... You know, she got the look on her face of like, and she started crying. I said, what's wrong? She's like, dad, I don't know. I don't want to disappoint you. I'm like, what's wrong? Like, I, first thing I came out of my mouth, like, what, you pregnant? She's like, what? I said, if you are, like, what the, you're 21. Like, uh, I'm glad you at least made it out of high school. She's a smart she said, girl. No. She said, no, no, it's not that. I said, then what is it? She said, well, I'm struggling in school. I don't know what's this and that. I don't want to disappoint you. And I said, oh, I said, let me stop you right there. I said, I tell I, the reason I tell you to go to school is because I want you to do something in life that you love, opposed to doing something that you have to do. I don't want that. I don't want that for you. You get what I'm saying? I don't want that lifestyle for you. So the reason I said school to you, because you said you wanted to, you know, she wants to be a veterinarian. I said, well, that requires school. So my part, my job as a parent is to help you accomplish your dream the best way I can. And that's by me pushing you or whatever, supporting you financially, whatever I got to do to help you fucking help you get there. Mm -hmm. Um, So. She was like, yeah, but I don't know what to do, Dad. I'm like, look, man, just maybe you need to step back from it or, or or take your time on it. But don't think that you're disappointing me because you're struggling. Yeah. I don't need that's extra weight you're adding to yourself that you don't need to add to yourself right now. But get through it. You know what I'm saying? Push through it. Like you always, I always tell her, like you, I always tell her, like your name carries weight, like you Robinson. Like I, I, you know, she respects our last name. I said, you're Robinson. You figure it out eventually. We all, all of us do. I said, figure it out. But stop thinking you're disappointing me. I said, the only way you disappoint me, if you murder somebody or 
for you harm harm the innocent child. That's disappointing to me. I don't, you know, I don't, you know what I mean? Because you shouldn't take nobody's life that was innocent and you shouldn't harm an innicent child. That's just my opinion. I look down on shit like that. So I said, that's it. Yeah, and I said, that's it. But I said, as far as the school shit, I said, care. I wasn't built for school. Everybody's not built for this shit. Some people are built to work. Some people are built to do other things in life. Mm -hmm. But don't, like, don't think you're disappointing me. Like, I'm proud of you. You got out of high school. You didn't have no kids. You went to college. Everybody that talks about you always have good things to say about you as a person, I never hear nobody come up to me like, man, Kev daughter, man, she got it. She crazy. You never a bad reflection on me on that way. And that's how I really try to raise my kids. Don't be a bad reflection on me and my parenting skills. Then, then that's when we got a problem as you in your teenage years. But when you become an adult and you want to live that fucking lifestyle, all right, cool. I can't tell you nothing. You don't want to listen to me. Figure that shit the fuck out. I'll always be here. But I can't have you stressing me the fuck out. Go, go figure, go, go do what you think is right. Come back to me when you figure that that shit out was wrong and you need my advice to get you on the right path. Would you would you say that um you guys have been have done anything in your life to be a disappointment to your parents? Like, what was that one thing you did that when you saw when you had to tell your parents and when they found out it was like shit I didn't want them to find that out not about me but anybody else but me yeah it wasn't so much disappointing I don't say it was a disappointment because it wasn't because she's the best but when I had Kier when I when I found out Helena was pregnant with Kier okay they had because they always thought I was going to be you know, something, whatever in life, whatever. They always had like high hopes for me. And I had her, she was, her mom was pregnant with her in my senior year of high school. And both my dads, uh, this is a story that's, ain't no, too many people gonna like, but it's a fucking true story. Um, My biological father, Larry, who passed away, when he found out, that I was having care. I was graduating high school. He came to my high school graduation and she had rolled up. My baby mom rolled up. Her stomach was showing. Now, all my brothers and them, they all college. They all listen. My dad probably had the same high hopes for me. He just looked at me. He looked at me. He was happy. He seen my girlfriend come up. with was lean at the time. She's pregnant with care. And he looked at her stomach. He's like, you got a baby on the way? I said, yeah. And you can see the look of disgust on his face. And maybe he has some envision for me. He's like, you know what? Whatever. I'm out of here. It worries me. you no longer concerned to me. What? Fuck. This is my graduation. I'm no longer your concern. What the fuck does that mean? Fucking walked off. I guess he was disappointed because he had hopes for me probably going to college and bettering my life and doing X, Y, and Z. And it was like this nigga said this. This is this is my graduation. This is my high school graduation. This is everybody's happy. I remember I went home and and cried like a bitch that night. I went in my room and cried. So my dad Kevin, who all all y'all know, that's still my pops. You know what I'm saying? My aunt was there. My aunt had seen my baby mom come in. I said, "Yeah, she's pregnant, auntie." He, she was like, um, "Your dad's not gonna be too happy about it, but I think you need to tell him." before he sees what I've seen and you let him know. Mind you, I'm still in fucking high school. So I had to went on the porch. I forgot. We were setting up a party. I never forget. He was on the back porch and I went out there. I said, Pops, I said, he's what's up. He said, um, I said, my, my girlfriend, she's pregnant. He was like, he was like, son, I'm disappointed in you. He said, because I had bigger dreams and everything for you. I seen you doing different things. He said, I'm disappointed in you and that kind of hurts me. But he said, right now you're a man. He said, I'm not going to help you out financially, but anything I can do for you emotionally and any, any stumbles you have along the way, I'll be there to guide you. But you're going to figure some stuff out as, on your own as a man because you did a man decision. And I'm like, you're right. 
And I guess that's what Larry was trying to, my dad Larry was trying to convey to me that, but it just came out wrong. Would you say, and we'll get to you, Kev, would you say that if that happened with uh, any of your kids, that you would kind of say the same thing that that uh, that Uncle Kev said? Yeah, that's the conversation I would have. Okay. Because okay. nothing against the two, the two men. Yeah, yeah. They handled it differently. Yeah, one, like I always tell my dad, Larry, the one who passed away, he knew me for a short period of time. We met each other at nine and 18. It's like it started falling apart for us. So he didn't know how to handle me as a person or what type of person I am. He, you know what I mean? It was such a short window of time for him. He handled everything like he handled with the rest of his kids who grew up with him. So they kind of expected that. A lot of people don't know how to my, communicate. Yeah, when I grew up with my dad, which I got my name from, Kevin, that's my dad. He knew how to handle the situation. He knew exactly what to say to me that would stop and make me listen and understand that I disappointed him. But he also on the back end let me know, hey, bro, I'm still I'm still here for you. Yeah. But you're gonna have to figure this, you're gonna figure this shit out because you did this decision. You did this stupid decision. You did this dumb decision, but you're gonna figure out, but I'm gonna be here for you to guide you along the way. So that was right. the I never felt so when he said I dis when he said you disappointed me, it was like I felt I felt that same pain, but then I got that love and that reassurance on the end, like yo, he's still he's not going, he's still here for me though. Yeah. So that was mine. What about you, Kev? I would say that my most disappointing moment would be probably having a call home from jail. Oh shit. I mean, Dropping yeah. bombs, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, not to say that Kev's is any worse, but you can be disappointed in someone because you felt like they may have altered their life to a different path because they were having a child or whatever the case may be. But at the same time, you were bringing another life into this world. You was making another Robinson. That's another person for everyone to love. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, they're just going to have to get over that. Yeah. You know what I mean? My grandparents would never get over me being arrested. And then and with it happening multiple times, it just didn't make it any better. But the first time me having to call home from just a police station mm -hmm. and tell them, I've been arrested da, da, da. and then having to get like bail money and the whole nine to bring me home and then being in the car with them on the way home. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it is, uh, you got Uber home from jail. Well, ain't no Ubers back then. Uh, I mean? but break, break down the emotions. You, I want you to but, break down the detail the emotions going through. I mean, it's more, it's, it's I'm hurt even more hurting them and disappointing them because I know for a fact that this is an embarrassing situation for them. Number one, mm. number two, it, it's a financial situation that they shouldn't even have to be obligated to, but they will be, you know what I mean? And um, three, I just, I just know that the disappointment for them sets further than just, I can't believe you would do this, Kevin. It's more them reflecting on themselves about how they raised me and what values should be important in my life that maybe I'm not, you know, um, living by, or maybe they feel as though they didn't do their job when they more than did their job. You know what I mean? I was just being me at the time and whatever I was involved in because it was just something I wanted to do, being influenced by whatever. And it's it's not just a it's not just a moment for that. It's like after it's done, when you wake up, you can kind of see and feel the energy, see the vibes of how they're reacting to you. Like it's something that affected them probably more than it affected me. And it probably should have been the other way around. Mm -hmm. And okay, 
And that shit is something that will weigh on you your whole life. It's not something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Kev, you had a daughter at an early age. And it's not something that anybody would have expected for you. But yeah. that's something that you turned around and became strong at. A good father, a role model. That made you a role model to everybody else that was younger than you in your family. Mm -hmm. It made you become a man faster than you anticipated. You know, it showed you where your values should lie at and made you the person you are today. That's why I always tell you, you the part of the family. You, you, you the new big mama because, <laughs> because you, but, but your values and the things that you live by are the things that we should strive to be real shit. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to something like having to go to jail, it's completely the opposite. You know what I mean? The values aren't there. You're obviously not living the way that you were taught to live or that they intended on you living. And you have to live with that disappointment nonstop. There is no, especially if you're convicted of something, there is no getting away from that. That is forever. It affects your life. Uh, both situations affect your life forever. But mm -hmm. you, you obviously turn a disappointment to a greatness. Because as your daughter, oh, was shit. Doing, sorry, as, what? <laughs> it just sometimes when you when somebody says something, the something pops in my head, and it's it just it was funny. I didn't mean to cut you off. You said you turned a disappointment. <laughs> you turned. Listen, what, all right, I want to tell you. What, 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 you turned a disappointment into a dick appointment. That's what popped in my fucking head. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but it was so funny. I couldn't keep. It, I couldn't keep it in. <laughs> I can't keep it in my brain. I'm sorry. We'll leave it to Dre. Oh, God. Hey, and this, and this, and this is, is telling Dre they heartfelt this shit. And this nigga told me about my dick appointment. Because I didn't want to do it. Now. But it was in my head. I'm like, I got to get it out. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. But, but what, what someone would call, I never experienced, experienced it to be a disappointment from you. But what others may have perceived is was a disappointment in their eyes for what you've done turned into a, one of your greatest feats. You know what I mean? Something that you excelled in doing. And and there's proof in the pudding, my nigga. You know what I mean? So I, I was trying to prove motherfuckers wrong. You you was with me that day. You was with me that day I got custody of care. Yeah, yeah, but you but but you remember what was saying it was to me more, that it was yeah, but it was more than it was it was more than that before that. You know what I mean for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was as soon as you found out that you were having a child your life um values and what you consider to be important immediately shifted mm. you know what i mean and that is what you dedicated yourself to from a young right. age at an age where someone would okay. be uh, let me speak on your situation cuz cuz you think it is a disappointment like yo i and i get where you coming from with it because it's like yo they like who is a joke but somebody would say who raised this nigga the way you can switch this shit into a positive is like, yo, you can guide your kids from the fucking mistakes that you made and you can break down about how your grandparents felt about you, how they, yeah. how, how, how that made you feel as a person and how it still weighs on you. And you can give that value to a kid and you can take the lessons that your grandparents gave you and your father gave you and instill that in your younger babies so they can see like, yo, I didn't fail. They can say in their eyes, I didn't fail, Kevin. Like it took him a longer time to get around to it. But them values and everything I was yeah. trying to give him, he did he he held on to him and he's giving them to my my grandbabies or my and my great grandbabies. And my legacy is now living through them. So yeah, that's how you gotta and, look and at I, it. I understand. I mean, I understand that taking all the lessons that you've learned throughout your life combining them into a ball so you can give them to your child but when it comes to when it comes to what you feel and and you being there for the emotional distraught of what you cause it will always be um it will always be a disappointment like 
they will never look at me being arrested, them having to come pick me up from jail and them having to pay for bail. And if I had to get an attorney or if I had to go to court, fight cases, whatever the case may be, that will never be, oh, Kevin turned a, po a negative into a positive, especially if you lose him, unless I, unless I did something to alter that situation and make myself great from that point on. But once, once, once it happened continuously, it's like, mm, what's going on with this? It, it is what's going on with this little nigga. You know what I mean? That's how they're looking at the scenario until I become an adult and have to maneuver them situations on my own. If they're having to take care of the situation, they're disappointed in every scenario that that happens. And that, and I feel it emotionally. I see it physically. You know what I mean? And I hear it from others. You know what I mean? Because if something happens in your family, you know that shit's going to trickle through ears immediately. It, it, you know what it, I mean? It, it's it's through through everything. Yeah. yeah. So you'll hear it from somebody else. And maybe they're expressing their disappointment to somebody else about what they didn't think you would be capable of even doing. Because of the way that they thought they raised you, and it's, 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 it put, yeah, and it, it it becomes a different emotional um, distress. It's not like you fucking up as an adult, and you know what? I just gotta figure this out. It's nah, I've, I fucked up, and I was their responsibility at the time, and they're paying for that physically, emotionally. They're paying for that um, embarrassed, being embarrassed. You know, what I mean, don't no no parent wants to be with another parent and hear about what their kids are doing from some other parent negatively yeah. anyway, negatively. Yeah. So when they get that, it's like, I gotta hear you, Kev, you know what I'm saying? I gotta hear from such and such that you done did this and that. Yeah, man. I that's that's you know what I mean. That, that's that's the thing. Yeah, you don't want to hear it's that. It's a combined shit. emotional distress and yeah. I mean, for me, I mean, that's just for me. You know what I mean? Uh, how it affected me and how I think it affected them. It didn't change the love. It didn't change the rapport. It didn't change the relationship. It didn't change between us. It was just one of those one of those dots in the timeline where you know, damn, I fucked up really bad here. And that will be it'll be with them from this point on. They'll always think of that and remember that. It might get over it. They might forgive, but they don't forget. You know what I'm so, saying? And if it happens you again, it's like uh, after a while, I'll just be like, well, apparently I, that's what he does. So let me ask you a question. Say now, say Kai is an adult like you. I mean, she's going to be an adult, but she's an adult. And this same situation happened to her. Are you going to look at her as a disappointment or are you going to be like, like, how would you look at that situation? He's, Good question. She's 21, 22. How would you look at that situation, one? And two, how would you handle either correcting or speaking to her on it? I mean, for me, I analyze the situation that's at hand. Um, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of things that she'll be learning along the way that I wouldn't have taught her or probably wouldn't have even had experience in. So it would depend on what she's actually getting in trouble for um, or, or what she actually did. If we've had conversations about this, if I did my due diligence as a parent to make sure that she at least has the knowledge to know the difference. And um, I think either way around it, I would blame myself at the end of the day. I mean, if she's a grown ass woman, even then she could be, I could be 60, I could be 70. And she could be, she'll be what, 50 something when I'm 70 mm -hmm. something. So even then, I would probably still blame myself. Like, like, did I, was I there to teach her that? If I did, why wasn't I there to make sure that she knew the difference? You know what I mean? I think I would have disappointment all the way around. Cause I mean, even, as, even with her being 13, there's things that she does that I'm disappointed in her about because I know she's learning. I know that between me, her mom, her grandparents, you know, uh, her stepmother, her friends' parents, the people that she holds close to her, you know what I mean? They, 
instill all the values that they have. And we don't let our kids just hang around anybody's parents or anybody's kids. You know, we, we try to keep it like we did back in the day. If you got friends and this is your friend, this is your best friend, I need to know their parents so we can we can be coordinated in what's going on in your life. <clears throat> right. So we get to know their values. We get to know what, you know, what they instill in their child so we can know, all right, I don't know if that's this is the right, you know, thing for your person for you to be around. You know, you got to watch out for this. You got to watch out for that. But I... I still feel more disappointed in myself when something happens because it's like, yo, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? You always question yourself when your child does something that you that you feel as though they shouldn't have done. Like, yo, I thought I I thought I yo, I thought I told you about this. Why are you doing it this way? You know what I mean? Yeah. But see, that's the thing. You can't like I see you can't put that stress on your head because I see parents that are um they got older kids, like here example, kid. They the kid somehow gets strung out on drugs, and it's like through the early years, like you're you're fucking you're you're blaming yourself. You're trying to figure out how to help them out. You're trying to do everything. You're constantly stressing over them, and sometimes as a parent, you got to just sit back and be like, you know what? I'm gonna pray over them. But there's nothing I can do, and I, I and I can't blame myself. Like I'm slowly killing myself, worrying about what this kid is doing. Only thing I can do is pray, and hopefully they they snap out of it. Because as many opportunities I gave them, and many and many chances I gave them, whatever I did to change their life, maybe I pulled them out of this area, put them in this area. They always kept doing what I didn't want them to do. I can't stress. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna let God figure it out, and hopefully they come back around. And when they do, they can see where they messed up at, and they can like like you're doing right now, like yo, apologize to whatever your grandparents and say, yo, it it wasn't you. This was solely me. I went to jail because of me, or I did drugs. It was me. It's nothing you did wrong. You know, I just did it because this is something I wanted to indulge, and this was feeding a demon inside of me that you had no part in, you know, in doing. Cause there, there are some parents that have a hand in doing a reason their kids is fucking, you know, maybe strung out on drugs. Maybe they was fucking inappropriately touching these kids when they were younger. We all maybe have they, something. Yeah. Negative in yeah, or, yeah. Or maybe you subjected them. Maybe you the one who started getting them high or maybe you the one who, who turned That's them right. on to this life of crime like you involved your kids in the in the shady shit you was doing instead of pushing them away from it so them people yeah you got to accept that and you got to hold that but there's some people that gave the gave the kids everything everything they can imagine never had the want or worry for anything and their kids just somehow turned to the negative shit and you just got to sit back and say to yourself i did everything i did as a parent one thing i could do now is wash my hands of the situation pray and hopefully they change their life and come back around and, and we can rekindle our our relationship, at, you know, as father, son, father, daughter, whatever, mother, daughter, mother, son, whatever. Just, just the parent and kid relationship. Maybe we can repair this shit. You know, the past to be the past. It happened. You won't be able to forget it, but you just hope they move past that situation in life. Yeah, Every, so. everybody has a journey in life. Everybody, no matter who you are. You have a journey and the things that happen to you along the way, I would like to say happen for you and you learn what you learn. And some people don't learn the first time. Some people don't learn the second time. So I, I just think in your journey or in any anybody's journey, when something happens, it's for you to learn you specifically. Now, when you're in your parents care, obviously that affects them as well. It affects them either way, but it affects them seeing what you had to go through. All right, cool. Yeah. But ultimately it's for you to now say, like if you burnt your hand on the stove, it's for you to say, I ain't touching that motherfucking stove again when it's had hot. You know what I'm saying? That's just what life is. So even jail or even having a child, it's just for, you know, it's, it's your journey. And over time, it's going to just make you who you are. So the person True. who goes down, I'm not even talking about you. 
a person who's been to jail for 10 years. I, I, one of the guys that I follow, Wes Watson, he went to, he been, he went to jail for 10 years and he learned certain things about himself in jail from being on lockdown, from doing all, all you went through all this hard shit to come out and use those things to make himself a millionaire. Mm. That the money matters to him. So I'm going to use that for him. For other people, it would allow you to be closer to your family. Like, yo, I'm never fucking leaving my family again for that amount of time. I'm going to be here for them, and I'm going to make sure I'm the patriarch or the matriarch of this family, period. You learn what you learn. Sometimes you go through some hard shit and learn the, the best shit in your life. So that's that's kind of what I take away from both of y'all's stories, man. It just made you who you are today. And like Kev said, you could pass it down to your kids. And now they, you know, they can understand or they won't. But I can they tell won't. you this. A lot of shit that my parents told me, it didn't go here. It went here. Uh -huh. And now as I move as an adult, that shit moved from here to here. It was always there. But I had to go through some shit to 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 now use this. And now I'm a little bit more cautious than the, the let, average person. Let me ask you a question to switch different gears. Um because we're adults now and our parents is older. They think you're going to go faster, by the way. But it, was it ever a moment in your life that you had to tell your, your mother, like, hey, I need you to be my mother and not be mom? And I mean by that is like, that. what I mean by that is mom is coming to you, hey, do this, your house dirty, this, this, that, this, do this, X, Y, Z. Whereas now, I just need you to be my mother. Just care for me. I ain't a kid no merit more. I'm a grown man. Respect what I got going on here and just love me like a mother should love their son. Was there ever a moment you had to say, hey, mom. Can I go? You ain't mom. Yeah, go ahead. This is for you. Mom, be uh, mom. Don't be mom, but be my mother. Go ahead, Dre. I'm a, I'm a different kind of person. I love my mom. Like, like man, that's my mom. That's, that's, that's my mom. A lot of times when she do that shit like that, because my mom does it naturally. I'll be paying my mom no mind, yo. And she know it. <laughs> and she be like, and she walk in my crib and be like, oh, why, you know, why this and that? Because I ain't feel like doing it. <laughs> Cause she know, like, I'm a man. This is my house. I run my house how I run my house. This ain't your house. You don't pay the bills here. I pay the bills here. It's a respect thing. So my mom, she might have some, you know, she, it's, it's different. It's not a disrespect thing at all. It's just like, this is how I run my house. And my mom respects that, but she's still going to get her shit off. But when did you build up the courage to let her know like, hey, when I that's what I'm out, saying. She, when she found my porn collection and I walked out the fucking house. That's when. <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not joking. The reason Wait. why is because hold, I got you because. Wait. She like you gotta understand. I always respected her house that way. Other than like having sex in it and all that, I respected her house that way. Like you know, that's what you heard your whole life. Like she pays the bills. That's I respected the fact that she makes decisions in this house. You know what I'm saying? Like I, who am I? I don't pay the bills here. So really, what fucking like yeah, wash the dishes. Ultimately, yeah, I gotta wash the dishes because I don't pay the bills here. If she tells me to wash my dishes or wash the dishes, I gotta wash the dishes. But when I when I walked out and then soon after started paying my own bills and understood what that, what that took, you know, like I take my mom's advice. That's, that's the difference. I take her advice, but as far as her, like setting the rules, it's like, you know, I set the rules. You could, you could tell me what you think, but if I don't, you know, if I don't want to actually follow that, I'm look at you like, yeah, I ain't doing none of that mom. Yeah. You should. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Yeah, I should, right? No. And mom, man, tell mom, me that. Tell me that. You watch, felt, no, you watch some bitches after you eat, though, mom. <laughs> I'm just going to be, yeah, be right there. I got a good story. I got a good story. I want to. I got a good story. I want to tell, but I, I need I you to tell me. Nah, I want to hear how you felt, like, like at that moment when she found that shit. And you was like, "Yo, we ain't doing What's this." The no porn stash. Oh, yeah, oh. but I'm saying, but Jim, tell me about yo. Yo, ain't, you ain't physically, would you just say we ain't doing this no more? How did you feel? I was Bill. fucking livid. Well, like, when she livid. found it, and this, yeah, and this, and this goes to what the, 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 the narrative that Kev was trying to say. Really, I just, I was, uh, it was like a couple, you know what I mean? But you, I put them in the, in the drawer underneath clothes, 
You know what I'm saying? It's not even that I was watching them a lot. I just had them because that's what you have. Yeah. So, you know, back when niggas had movies. So yeah. I just had them. So she says, oh, I was looking for clothes for, for my brother. I'm like, mom, you never look for clothes for my brother. What are you talking about? You was going through my shit. And at that very point, the reason why I left is because, you know what I realized? I don't you pay the privacy. bills there. Yeah, and you need your privacy. You and I need my privacy work. because I'm a grown ass, at the time, I'm a grown, I'm in my 20s, I'm a grown ass man. So I was livid at that. I wasn't mad at her though. Don't get it twisted. I didn't leave her like, fuck you, no. mom, or none of that shit. No. I was just mad that, yo, you think it's cool to do that? That's fine if you think it's cool. I'm going to go ahead and maybe that's why I do the things that I do now. I'm going to go ahead and go because you ain't never going to do this shit again. <laughs> See, I'm just that, I'm that kind of nigga. You fuck, you, <laughs> I love you, but if you think, if you're going to do something that I don't agree with and it's warranted because, you know, I'll just remove myself from the situation. That's just See. me. See, my situation was, it was my dad. He, my pops came. He's over here. When I was doing the roof of my house, right? Infection. Nah, I was doing the roof of my house. Right? I was doing the roof. Nah, he dedicated the portion. Nah, nah, I, I was doing the roof of my house here, right? So we was doing the roof, and it got to a point where it got to like a complicated part. But I knew, like, it was something I had. I was putting the shingle down, at, and it was a pipe there. So I knew I had to put this thing that connects to the pipe that sheds the water. Like, I like I, I can't put it underneath the shingle because when the water hits it. Is gonna go underneath the shingle. I needed it to hit this and go over top of them. So me and my dad arguing back and forth. He telling me how to do it. So he says to me, "Boy, you, man, listen. What I'm telling you, you gonna do this shit just like this." I said, "Yo, I said, nigga, this my fucking house. You, you ain't gonna nigga? tell me, said, nigga. Yeah, I said, nigga, this oh, exactly shit. my word. I said, nigga, this my fucking house. I gotta fucking live here. You ain't gonna tell me how I'm gonna put this goddamn. Roof. I'm gonna put this roof on like I want to put it on. I said, you know, man." Whatever, man, whatever. I'm out. I got off the roof and I had to go to Home Depot to get something. On the ride to Home Depot, I came to the realization I just cussed at my father, raised my voice at my father. As I'm getting to Home Depot, I'm feeling smaller and smaller and smaller inside. I felt when I was leaving Home Depot, I felt so bad. I'm like, damn, I was like in tears. Like, I I can't believe I just said this to my dad. Mm -hmm. Like, I just flipped on my dad. I spazzed when I raised my voice. It's my dad. Man, I got back. I came back. I seen him. And I could see the look on his face. Like, I heard his feelings. I said, Dad, like, I had to apologize to him. I gave him a hug. I said, Dad, I, I'm so sorry. I, but, like, just my house. I'm living here. Dad, you can understand. He was like, son, he said, you know what? I had to realize that this is your house and you are a man. And I realized I got to listen to you because this is your space. He said it was a mess up over. I probably said, nah, that shouldn't even went off on you like that. And we hugged it out. But it's just, that was the moment. It's like, man, but I felt, oh, man, I felt, I felt terrible inside. Mm -hmm. I, I still to this day, every, even when I'm bringing this story up, I still feel terrible about it because I love this man so much. Mm -hmm. But he had to realize like, yo. I can't talk to my son like he's a boy anymore, like I used to chastise. But that's how he was coming at me. He was coming at me. He came at my brother Kyle with the same thing. And he did yeah, that the was same like thing three then. years ago, dog. <laughs> y'all niggas was he's well into y'all neighborhood. Y'all have kids and in your own. Well, exactly what my dad would always do that shit. And we was always, because it's my dad. You got to understand, I'm course. terrified. This nigga whipped my ass when I was a kid, when I was in trouble. So I was always terrified mm -hmm. of my dad or how I would speak to him. My dad would say stuff at 20. We was going down south at 20. Oh, y'all niggas ain't going to be drinking like that all night, man. Y'all got, we got to wake up in the morning. And it was like, <laughs> yeah, dad. So it took for this moment for me to like, yo, nigga, let me check you real quick. But in me checking them, oh, I felt so fucking horrible. But it, but we, I, but that right there is like, yo, you know what? I got to understand this is hard conversation. kids. Yeah, he's got kids. He got house he got family sick this is he's a man now i can't keep talking to him like that and bro it felt good that we hugged it out it felt good that we got you know we cleared the air and that's it and our conversation now are a lot different because of that ain't so much of him hit me with the dash it is just more the advice shit it had to happen that conversation yeah. had that we all had this point 
except for, except for me and my dad, I think me and Tim just kind of understand, like, like I move like a man and like, he kind of, you know what I mean? Like he kind of know, like, mm. that's my dad. I love my dad. Love my dad. Love my dad. But it's like, fuck, you won't tell me, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so Kev, I know Kev had that moment. So who was, can you talk? I think I know about you more, but I'm going to let you tell me about, about your moment with you and your pops. Because y'all close. I mean, me and my pops have had some moments. They were always my fault. I can say that for sure. My dad, I mean. What was your moment, was what a, was your moment that you was in the right and he was in the wrong? That you had to let him know I'm a man. Right of passage, you mean? Yeah, the right of passage. So that's what I'm basically saying. My dad never really comes at if if it's mine. My dad has always been the person to let me mine be mine. It's never overstepped his boundaries. He's never even come out of his mouth sideways about how my house would look. None of that. It's his shit. That's I mean, the, we I've never been in a scenario with my father where he's somewhere where it's mine and he's like, nah, yo, you need to do this. My dad is never the per he I think my dad is probably the one who taught me to mind my motherfucking business the best. Because my dad will mind his business. He'll get the information, but he minds his fucking business. It ain't got nothing to do with him. He's not gonna let no bullshit happen around him, but I'm out. But I don't know if you can even speak on the situation. You told Kev, me you don't you ain't minding your business right now. No, I know, but he well, told me the situation that it happened, but it was in his dad's space. But he had to let his dad know, like, yo, pops. Okay. Chill. The only time that I felt I was in a weird situation with them is when I came to a cookout and found I was I was coming with um I was with my my girl at the time, and he invited my daughter's mother there at the well, not him per se, but my 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 daughter's mother was invited there as well. So I had to be in a scenario where I'm with two people who didn't care for each other at all. And I have to navigate and also deal with the repercussions at home of why this is happening. You know what I mean? I've been in that and I definitely had a conversation with him, but I also got an answer that made total sense from him. I ain't do that was, shit. <laughs> which was which was nigga, I didn't even know she was coming until she showed up. <laughs> Told you. Mm, yeah, nigga, I ain't do that shit. That I wouldn't have let that shit go down. That was the story have, I remember. But, but, but so when you when you're asked, that's why I said he has he, he doesn't yeah, yeah, involve said, yeah. himself in nothing. That was him happens his business. with me. Me and my dad have had our ins and outs, um, and we both know as an as an adult, my grandparents were 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 my um my legal guardians from the age that I was two. When whatever happened with my mom and me and my parents, I ended up living with them. They ended up being my caretakers, my guardians. They held me down until my grandmother, who just passed away last week. They held me down my whole life for everything, wants and needs. Now, that's not to take any credit away from my pop because we all lived in the same household. My Me, my grandparents, my dad, my aunt, her son, my cousin was like a brother to me because we lived in the same household. Me and this little nigga lived in the same household almost our whole lives until we became adults and moved to our own. And even when when we moved to florida and he's him, him him and my aunt got their own place and i was with my grandparents so we had our own place we lived blocks away from each other literal blocks you know what i mean so he was we were still in each other's house every day and um our family has always been tight because we we were a family that literally grew up together all of us in the same house my uncle eric too you know what i mean he he was in and out getting his own place and figuring out life on his own too but we all grew up in the same household we lived we ate dinner as a family six to seven of us that my grandparents would put together 
it was literally, I mean, I've probably had one of the best childhoods you could have as a kid, family wise, but they provided that for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would never take any credit away from my dad because he was still there to teach me. He lived with us, you know. He pretty much ran the basement with the exception of my grandfather washing clothes down there. That was his whole space, like a little apartment. But he's always he's always told me, yo, sometimes you gotta just mind your business. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Make sure you don't you don't deal with it if it ain't got nothing to do with you. And I've lived my life. My wife will tell you, I am a prime example of minding a motherfucking business. Unless you divulge information, I'm not really there to get it. Unless I really, really care about you and I want to see how I can help you. But my dad has been great about, yo, that's my son shit. I, I don't know. You got to ask that man. It's man respect. It's respect. Yeah. My yeah. mom, I've never had the relationship like that with my mom to, uh, for her to be in the same space as what is mine. She's only stayed with me one time. <laughs> In my whole adulthood when she came to visit and um she didn't never have really room to to uh say anything you know what i mean <laughs> uh, yeah she knows what i'm talking about <laughs> she knows what i'm talking about wait why, why the <laughs> fuck are y'all watching today all of a sudden yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what he was talking about they watching now <laughs> but, this is um, a good episode <laughs> yeah but my mom she's never had um the space to tell me what I could or couldn't do, period, I think. I mean, she, you know, at points she tried to, I think I just looked at it as advice in my, from my point of view. We're just now getting to actually try to have a better relationship, you know, from father, I mean, from mother to son. Um, but she's never had the chance to be that person to to overstep her boundaries i would never let her you know what i mean yeah you yeah. i think you would check that because you don't you yeah know I mean? you know what i mean yeah. and even and when i was younger i mean i mean she was she's always going to be my mom i love her you know what i mean you only get one real mother you know what yeah. i mean and i will always have appreciation for her bringing me into this world and making whatever decision she felt like she had to make <clears throat> i look at it as an adult as she put me in a situation where i got to live a better life maybe she, maybe the life that she couldn't provide for me and maybe she was making a hard decision or or maybe somebody else was making a decision for her i don't really know the truths to my childhood you know it'll always be a mystery because go find it'll out, be bro. one it'll be one person's word against another and go find i'll out, find bro. out I'll find out when I'm dead and God decides to show me what happened in my life. Then I'll get, I'll finally get the truth. But yeah, but I mean, I still give shout outs to my mom because mm -hmm. I gather her childhood wasn't great at all. So for her making whatever sacrifice she had to make to put me in the scenario where I got to live the way I got to live, I'm appreciative for that alone. <clears throat> that's that's yeah. something you just hit on something though that I think we all haven't really thought about. If you think about what your parents had to go through in their childhood to be able to raise you in a certain way, like my mom's be telling me shit now that I'd be like, damn, that happened to you? Like, damn, mm -hmm. that's how y'all was living. Yeah, I mean, I don't fucking insane. They hit a lot of us. They hit a lot I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know my mom's side of the family. I understand. I don't know them. I I could point them out. I, a handful of them. I could point mm -hmm. them out. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? My mom, her sisters, uh, some of their kids. You know? I, I mean, I don't know them. I've spent mm -hmm. some holidays with them as I was younger. I've seen them when I was staying weekends at my mom's house every now and then when I was a kid. And to, to a teenager. And then um, once I became an adult, I just wanted the relationships with my brothers more than I wanted anything else out of yeah. that side of the family. You know, uh, yeah. my little brother Cyrus, BJ, my older brother Junie, you know what I mean? We, don't, we all don't have the greatest 
relationships, but we still all talk to each other. We we now it feels like it took for us to get to the point that we are now to want each other more. You know what I'm saying? Like me and Sai, we always been me and Sai always been locked in, always mm-hmm. since we were kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the relationship between my other brothers weren't as strong. Now and now today we talk to each other way more than we've talked to each other when we were younger. You know what I mean? To try to build that rapport. <clears throat> you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I mean it's it's and that goes into te- teaching your yeah, own yeah. kids because like when Kai asks me about it's anytime I bring her around my mom's side of the family, it's definitely an introduction. She doesn't know them. You know what I mean? She knows her uncle Cy. She's met her uncle Juni a few times, but she couldn't point him out. You know what I mean? She knows her uncle BJ. She sees him because we, you know, we spend time together because we live the closest, you know? So we try to do what we can with the time that we have. Um, it's, It's hard for me to even parrot her and tell her who these people are because I don't even know them. It's just a whole nother side of a family that is a mystery to her. And I feel like that's a disadvantage because you don't know what you're missing. Like, I should be able to speak Spanish, mom. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want I to say be able to, I should be able to speak fluent Spanish. My older brother, Juni, speaks Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. Cyrus don't speak Spanish. BJ don't speak Spanish. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. I should be fluent. You Un poquito? Know, yeah, they don't speak Spanish. I mean, you know the basic shit. If Cyrus want to cuss you out, he can cuss you out. You know what I mean? We knew the Spanish that we knew was from my mom being upset and her going into Spanglish. Cállate. And if you don't know what that is, she'll talk to us in English and Spanish in the same sentence. So we'll you kind of know what she's talking about because you've been yelled at so much. You know what I mean? And, you know, trying to build that relationship with her now, it's, it's hard. It's hurtful because I can hear it. I can hear the desperation when she talks to me about how much she wants it. But it's also like, how much time do we have to do this? What are you willing to what are you willing to give up to make this happen? Because you live in Florida. I live in Jersey. There's a whole, you've got grandkids. You know what I mean? Soon, soon enough, within the next 10 years, you might have great grandkids. You know, because my, my daughter's 13. She'll be 23. You know, it's a chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's got older cousins. You know what I mean? I, I understand. You know what I mean? So you you, you just don't know. 23, 24, she could get married at 21 for all I know. You know what I mean? The future holds whatever it holds. I had my first child when I was 26. Kev had his first child when he was 18. You, you never know. You know what I mean? So, so I, it's. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, 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 un- it's, it's one of the it's ones. Understandable. It's one of the ones. But I think. That's why I'm I'm pretty sure that's why you wait you, you know you raise kind of more so close to each other and you try to make sure you know y'all got two different moms or whatever, but y'all gotta be with here with me every weekend, whether y'all like it or not. Like you well, got is a different spirit altogether. You yeah, know? she she loves people, you know. What I mean, she might not like people all the time, just people that she don't, you know, everybody got somebody you don't really fuck with like that. Yeah, but when it comes to her little sister, she don't play. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. she's always she fought for the love for her little sister. You know what I mean? Especially with the life that we had to go through. And I tried to teach them that, yo, at the end of the day, at one point, you two will be all you have. You know what I'm saying? You you need to have the love and the relationship mm-hmm. to to make y'all strive because you don't have no other sisters or brothers. You know what I mean? Amor has a brother, but Kaya Moore would all would be all you had as an adult when it comes to sibling wise, the person that you would be able to ha- have the chance to get to know the best. Mm. Y'all share the same DNA. You know what I mean? Y'all gonna do a lot of things similar because I teach y'all the same way. So but it's just 
it's regretful to not be able to show them another side of life or not even be shown another side of life for yourself that probably would have been beneficial way more beneficial for me if i knew if just if i knew other languages because it's 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 my native language if i knew another language who knows what that would have branched out to me the different people i might have met you know the different positions i might have been able to hold who knows you know what i mean so set a stone yeah, I mean, it, I'm 40 now. Nah, nah, but uh, nah, I'm just nah, saying. Nah, I'm I'm just ass. saying. Just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, you should reach. You should. That's that's a job as that's a job as you, as an older parent raising older kids. It's like, yo, man, push my motherfucking pride to the side. If you know, me and this kid don't get along, let's let's make it work. We both are fucking adults right now. Let's just talk to each other as adults and let's these hard conversations that I probably couldn't have with you as a kid that you probably wouldn't understand. I can have you as have with you now as an adult that you can see. All right. I can understand that. I probably do the same thing. Like, all right. Mom, Some conversations are definitely saved. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. yeah, Something it, you can only have when you are ready yeah. to have the mind frame to give and receive emotionally without things turning into something chaotic. Mm -hmm. too yeah. old for that shit now yeah i mean there's a lot of shit that i want to know you know what i mean i would love to know all about my mom and the decisions that she made or she felt as though she had to make you know what i mean and what brought her to where she oh, at yes eh. i know bro I mean, i'm saying i'm saying mom. that i need I'm that, saying that. I need, it sounds, I need sounds a little yeah. Easier than I, it actually yeah. is. No, I mean, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell it you. It would why. have to be a face-to-face -face conversation. It have to be something where, and now the person has to be ready. To, yeah, yeah, he needs I to just, be able to sit and look at me and just tell me all the things that she's never been able to tell me. There's worlds of things that she doesn't know about me, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a lot that my dad doesn't know about me, but that's because as an adult, you just you hid it from him. Yeah, you're doing your own thing. You know what I mean? It's not everything you're going to talk about. But the important stuff, my dad knows. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that my mom just doesn't know about me. Just doesn't know. I'm sure she yeah. couldn't tell you a favorite color. You know what I mean? I'm sure yeah. she couldn't tell you a favorite food. It's just, just things that she doesn't know that I'm sure it creates regret. And, and shut the fuck up, Ty. <laughs> no, no, I'm just... <laughs> And fucking, uh, you know, there's things that I would want to know, and and because you gotta wonder how you came to. Be. I don't, bro, I mean, bro. I, as the reason, how, how, reason, how the am reason, I here now, and why? Right, you know what I mean? Bro, the reason I'm saying that to you, and the reason I'm saying that situation to you, because my father, my biological father, just passed away. Yeah, and I got this gap of history. I don't know, like. I'm hearing how he is from other people when he died at the funeral and I'm hearing all these similarities and I don't know shit about this man. Mm -hmm. But when I go flip through his obituary, I'm looking at these pictures like how the fuck can I look so much like this motherfucker? I look so much. It's like looking in the fucking mirror. Yeah. I don't know shit about him. And when he was in the hospital going through the things when he was dying, I was waiting for him to get coherent for me and him to have this conversation, this heart to heart. Like, yo, bro, let's let's clear the fucking air. Like, why did you come around? Why did you even want to be a part of my life? Like, at some point you thought you did wrong and you made the mistake. Like, I wanted to know all this shit. And it's like now I don't have no fucking point of reference. And I I and I say this because just a couple of days ago, I I fucking was broke. I was in my backyard fucking doing yard work and I just fucking broke down in tears and I called my sister like hysterically crying and she couldn't give me the answers that I needed and the answers I needed was from a man who's no longer here now and it, and it fucks with me and I'm always giving and I hate this because I'm always giving advice to other people of advice I should have fucking followed and it was so much I, I just I, it's a huge chunk of my life I don't know about and I had the fucking playbook in front of my face and I get where you're coming from, Kev. I just was just too fucking. I didn't know how to approach this situation, and I and that's why I get what you're saying. What you say because approaching that shit is not fucking easy. Like, yo, man, walking up to him, like walking up to him, like, all right, you found out about me when I was fucking eight, nine years old. 
but you only stayed around till I was fucking 18 and was hearing it like, what the, f- why? Explain that shit. Please explain that shit. Why the fuck did you even want to know me? Like, what was such a big deal for you to know who I am? Like, why Why was you here? Why did you show up and, and as quick as you showed up, as quick as you gone? Because I got a fucking 10 year period with this man where we was constantly in each other's life. And then that shit just stopped from me being 19, 20 to I'm 40 years old and we trying to fix this shit. So out of 40 years of life, if I can put together everything, the phone calls, the meets, the greets and everything, and me and him talking 15 years, it amount to 15 fucking years that I know this man. I don't know shit about him. And it's like, people are like, yo, man, he was a family dude. He liked to have cookouts. He liked to be surrounded by a family. He liked to do this. I'm like, damn, that sound like me. It sound like me. Like, this sound yeah, but like it me. also like, make you fuck. feel like, if it makes you feel like, well, if that was the case, then why why were you around? Yeah. yeah. Or why wouldn't I have been there when all your family? Bro, I, I say that shit, shit all. No, nigga, I, that's what I'm saying. I say this shit all the day. I, I'm sitting back now as a 40 year old man saying to myself, like, if I would have known this about this man, maybe I'd have been sitting at his house, just kicking, kicking it with him, just having fucking father son conversations with him. But I had that with my dad, Kevin. I can, my kids, my girls know when I go to see my pops where I got my name from, that's my dad. When I say my dad, that's who I'm talking about. Everybody knows that. He's Kevin. That's who I'm talking about. I can go to his house. And sit there and have a fucking conversation with this man for two hours. And it'd be my kids telling me, or whoever with me, oh, I want to go home. <laughs> but we're just having a conversation between father and son about every fucking thing, about life, sports, every fucking thing. And he knows everything about me, and I know everything about him. But when we look at it, when I look at him, I don't see yourself, myself. I just see what I fucking inherit from him. Because it's shit genetically in me that I can't explain. That he doesn't do, but I do. This just inbred, it just put in my DNA. I can't explain yeah. that shit to fuck off. I can't. I don't know how to even quantify. I'm like, why the fuck do I do this shit? My mom don't do it. He never did it. Where the fuck I get this from? Mm. And then somebody be like, oh yeah, your pops used to do that. Like what? Yeah, hey, Larry used to do that shit. I'm like what? And it's like man, I had a fucking playbook here that I didn't even tap into. That's the only reason I say that shit. But I understand where you're coming from because well, it's just I, stuff that I want before I just I don't want to just be on the phone. I know it's something I need that. Face. Yeah, I need that physical interaction between the two of us. I need for her to see the hurt. And I need to see the hurt too. I need to be able to understand and know what's real. And I need to be able to, I can look at a person and know like a lot of this shit is cap. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to feed into this, but, but I can look into your eyes and I can know if what you're telling me is something that really, really affects you. You know what I mean? And I need that. I need to, I need to be able to see, feel and give, the pain that I've received from just the negligence, pretty much. You know what I mean? And understand, well, what made you choose your two younger sons, but not your two older sons? You know what I mean? And what what positions put you, what position were you in to be like, I can't do this for you? You know what I'm saying? Or I don't want to continue to try. Not just as a child, but all the way through life. You know what I'm saying? What position were you in when you became the age you're at and you decided, yo, I missed out on my kid's life because of whatever I did. And now what is making you want to be here now? Because you never miss nothing that you never really had. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you're not used to it being around, if it doesn't come around, it doesn't affect you either or at the time being because you're not thinking about it. You know what I mean? And now that's something that should be here or should have been here from day one wants to interject themselves in your life. I need to know where where are we at? 
Why are we this way? Why am I the way I am? You know what I'm saying? Just like you said, there's stuff that I do that, you know, my one half of the family just don't do. What makes me tick like that? You know what I mean? And and how are we going to repair this? How are we going to make things better? Because now, from from what I'm used to being vacant, is now now trying to occupy the space, and I have to fucking do a lot on my own end to make sure that this works out in a genuine notion, in a genuine motion, where my kids can actually grow and learn to be in this situation to get to know you and you get to know them and my wife and you know at this point people know you to just not be around so they may not dislike you but they sure enough won't like you you know what i mean because you i don't dislike him mom I, I'm, not, like, I'm not saying. I mean, I'm yeah, not I, I seen. I know. Her, I, know her, but I, yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I couldn't. I yeah. and as much as I've been around you, I couldn't tell you what she looks like. But I just got like an outline of her. Yeah, but that's how long it's been. Should it have been like that? Is the question you need to ask yourself. A person who's been in my life, my whole entire life, is you. Since I can remember remembering things, you've been around my whole life. There's no reason that. You should not know who what my mom looks like. There is, you know, what I mean, I know what your father in your life looks like, and I know what your mother looks like. Your aunt, your uncle, your cousins, your brothers. You know, what I mean, even when they're new and just coming in, even from Larry's kids, when they come to the events, I know who they are. You get what I'm saying? Because oh, now they're here. I'm in your life that much that I care to want to know. Oh, that's Kev's brother. All right, yo, what's up? We got to build a rapport because if you don't know, I'm the fuck around all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, but it, so, but it shouldn't be like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it shouldn't that's be it. like. It shouldn't be like that, and that's what I'm saying. For me, knowing you as long as I known you is like I remember going to the cookout, seeing mom joins. Like, and we, we go a couple times. times. We had great yeah. times. It was like, and I always used to say, like, damn, why Kev don't. And that's always been my back. My like, why can't don't got a rapport with? Yo, this she just like him. She she funny. She crazy. Like she just talking shit and everything. It's like it's this energy. But I'm like, damn. And I couldn't figure that the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, she, the energy feel good, but if Kev ain't around, there's a fucking reason. And that's who I trust more than anything. And that's who I'm going to agree with more than anything. And if he feeling this type of this type of way, I'm going to feel the same type of ways he feel. Is you know, <laughs> you know, what I mean, it ain't going to be no hate or no animosity. But it's like, yo, you fucking with my cousin now. It's like, all right, well, you his mother, and I respect that. But like, let him be. Like, he all right. Let him fall back. I think I came and, to a point in my life when it comes to her, and and this is more like us being raised by our parents, and the disappointments that we have we've received and given at this point but not to say that i didn't want to go where i wasn't wanted but i think i felt like i shouldn't be asking to go to my mom's house more than she should be asking her son to come here you know what i'm saying and i think that's the that's when i started to kind of fall back like when i was in my ways and i really be like I mean, you've known me to be on some shit. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? No. So once I started paying the type of person that I felt as though I may be more needed to be than I really wanted to be, um, when I started not really caring if I went there or not is when I really stopped actually going. Because it's like, I shouldn't be asking my dad, yo, can I go to my mom's house this weekend? It sounds weird to even say that right now. My daughter never has to say, hey, can I go to my dad's this weekend? No, she'll call me, yo, dad, I'm coming through. That's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right, cool. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of times, I, I it's the other way around. Yo, Kai, what's your plans this weekend? You coming through? What's up? You know what I mean? I the kids don't feel weird. Or to make What's mine hers because yeah, they don't feel her weird coming in your house. No, nah, no, nah, no. She eat me out of house at home. She sure enough don't feel weird. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean? just <clears throat> she, that's what 
but 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 I don't I never had that type of significance as a mother figure from her because I I mean I had that at home with mm -hmm. Clara May. You know what I mean? My dictator as a as a young. You know what I mean? What Clara May says really, really goes. And the only person who could really trump her would be Leroy. And half the time, it was never that case. <laughs> I've been there. Of the time, <laughs> Leroy on the side of the woman, his woman. Yeah, nah. nah smart man. That. Yeah, smart I love man. Him, I love oh. him, so I know how to pick my battles. Uh huh. Real oh shit. man. You know what I mean? The dictator, the the our matriarch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Grandma and, came over, and kicked me out of the house so many times. Yeah, yeah. Grandma <laughs> man, have get it, your tall you ass out of the house. Yeah, yeah. Oh, out of here, nigga. No. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, and I know she. Yo, you over here, and Leroy probably making y'all sandwiches. Sandwiches. Oh, oh. <laughs> but but that's all but, I waited but for. She still, but she loved. <laughs> but she loved you just the same. She just loved setting it. rules yeah. in her house. Yo, I'm home. Uh, y'all been playing all day. Go the fuck to your house, Kevin. I'm, you know what I mean? We but got it wasn't that. She was like, it's getting dark. Yeah. You know what that means. You know you're supposed to be home. Yeah. yeah you she know was a mother home. of all the kids like, oh, that was yeah. around. I was like, all right. We all went through it Man, with listen. each other's parents. But, I, I mean, mm. I never, I didn't, I never felt that part that, yo, are you, why aren't you coming? Yo, where you at? Yo, you supposed to be here. It never had that. I got told plenty of things. After a while, I just started going in there, in one ear and out the other. When I was old enough to understand, when I felt I was old enough and I felt as though I understand what was going on in the family, um, you know, I guess the family parameter within them, I knew that. You know, if I if I'm gonna take anything from this, I'm gonna try to be as close to my brothers as I can because you know what I'm saying? Like I, I didn't I grew up just me. Raheem lived with all his cousins, around all his cousins and shit like that. My brothers lived together, you know what I'm saying? And I, I live with my dad and my grandparents. So I needed to reach out to those that were around my age, my kin, my you know what I mean, all of the shit that I needed. But I could only get to one half. You know what I mean? When I wanted to, like, like at grass reach, like, oh, yo, if I need Raheem to come over, he lives five minutes down the street. You know what I mean? He's here. I didn't get that from the other side. I never had the attachment. And trying to build it now with my mother more, because me and my brothers are attached. If anything go down, they already know how we get down together. <clears throat> when it comes to my mom, all of our rapports with her are a little shaky. And I mean, my older brother, it feels like their relationship is not existent. And me and my mom's is, is I love her and I'm here for her, but I'm not willing to bend over backwards to make things happen because I've never received that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I graduated. I don't even remember her being there. You know what I'm saying? That that shit that sticks with you forever. When I make decisions like that, I say shit like that. Like, nah, mom, I can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't even recall why. You know what I mean? Like, why? Like, yeah, you my mom's, but I got other people I got to take care of. It, yeah, it sounds be. crazy to say that in a sense. No, it don't. It no, I mean from a person no, no. who's I mean, you're only saying that from I, I said, you understand when it comes to all right, well, yeah, my dad was like that too. But when it comes to the mother, like every it's a mom when you yeah, think I, of a mom, she's the one that is supposed to be like, nah, man, I'm doing whatever I can. I, I mean, I'm yeah, stiff arming yeah. anybody in the way for these people that I've spawned. You know what I mean? I never felt like I received that from that end, and it makes it easier for me to be like more to say oh that's crazy than to be like well what can i do to help you know what i mean yeah listen Nick, yeah. i'm just you know I me mean, i'm just speaking from experience so i like i understand what you're going through right now and it's like you know, so, i just hope you don't make the mistake as a big cousin i wouldn't be a big cousin i just say no, if I'm i don't tell ever, you know i'm saying I'm you don't ever mistake. block her off i'm well, accepting trying. To trying. everything there but no, there's I mean, things that i want to make that happen you can't build a life with somebody 
or try to repay no, I, no. and you live. But the thing cause I ain't saying build a way. You know I ain't saying mean? build a life, but I'm saying get the you, you get your Try. information. No, that's what I'm saying. Try to get the information you need for yourself. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. Get the information that you need for yourself that you can go to sleep at ease with night. It, it, you can't oh, don't, oh I don't you, sleep. I don't yeah, sleep bad because of it at all. No, no, that's but what I'm, I'm saying that's you, what I'm trying to explain is yeah. is it's so non-existent that it's like it. strangers coming to you and being like, hey, yo, I'm just trying to get to know you. And it's yeah. like, mm, I've been alive for a long, long time, doggy dog. You know what I mean? And it's not like, like, yeah, my mom, I can understand you. You had, you've been through so much life that you're at a point, yo, I just, y'all are adults. I just need to do for me. And all right, if that's a decision that you decided to make, then so be it. You know what I mean? Shunning yourself from everyone else is crazy though. But, having family that lives 30 minutes from you like an aunt her sister any of her sisters and and i mean i, I consider myself to be non-existent to them you know what i mean unless facebook's reminds them that it's my birthday you feel yeah, what i'm hey, saying bro. which is crazy yeah. that's another reason why i'd be ready to go off facebook sometimes i'll be like man I don't really need none of that it's, shit. It's, you know but what you, mean? you going through is understandable. It's like, I, and aunts and, aunts and uncles ain't that responsible. I had uncles that I was cool with, and they say, Neff, why you don't come around? I was like, nigga. But then I can't be mad at them. It's like, you know what? Why can I be mad at them? Like, my dad didn't even bring me around y'all. So how can I expect to be around y'all if he wasn't even around me? And, mm -hmm. and, and I got cousins. I got cousins that I knew as a kid, but we see each other now. Like I see my cousins when my father passed away. I remember them as a kid. I remember talking to him. So I'm like, yeah, what's up? Up. It's like, yeah, not like who you? It's like, damn. And I can't be mad at him because it's like, yo, y'all was so much younger than me. We was tight when we was kids. When I, when I was in my dad's life, but I ain't been around for fucking, you know, what I mean, twenty some years. Like, the, how the fuck do I was expect to have a relationship with you? I ain't been around in twenty fuck. I ain't been around twenty years. So. Yeah, like I don't so that's why I'm even mad. That's why I don't even be mad at my, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. Like, yo, man, like difficult. Some of y'all remember me, some of y'all don't. Some of y'all want that relationship. Some I can't, I'm not gonna force no fake shit with y'all. It's like, yo, I don't know this nigga, man. Like, this nigga might be weird. But I could be saying the same thing around them. It's like, I don't know this nigga, this nigga might be weird. I don't want to hang with this nigga. Like, I'm not just going and that's man. the thing. I'm not gonna spawn some fake ass relationship because my dad passed away. You know what I mean? Oh, this yeah. this man passed away. So I'm not gonna spawn that fake shit. It happened, happens. But as an adult, I don't care no more. As a kid, I'm just speaking as a kid who who would only see them, you know, what I mean, in, in certain times, but you being close just is weird to me. Cause as an adult, I mean, I'm not close with all of my nieces, nephews, and shit like that. But my line is open. I make sure that you have my number if you need something from me. You can call me. You know what I mean. I don't want you to feel like I'm just this distant dude. You can get in contact with me. You can know where I'm at. You can come chill at the crib or whatever. It's, as a as a child, I felt like that, I, that there is, there was none of that. You know what I mean. So then you just let go. It, it, it's it's strange, and I'll say this in closing: is and I I, I don't I don't like to say back in the day, but I I have to put this stamp on. That's your motto. At the time, I don't know about y'all grandfathers. I'm pretty sure that I'm correct in saying this is about y'all grandfathers too. My grandfather had events over his house. He had a lot. We had family reunions. The family unit with cousins and everybody was a lot closer yeah. when we yeah. was kids. Yeah. And now as adults, it's there is none of that. There's everybody kind of has their own little pods that they deal with and everybody on the outside kind of just, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a little different. Um, it's a little different as far as family dynamic as well. And it is harder and you do, and, and a person has to want to work harder to maintain certain relationships. But I'm gonna tell you this right now. I love all my cousins. I love all, I love, I love these people. But I'm not going to be best friends with everybody. We're not going to hang out like I do with everybody else because it's just not enough time in the it's not enough time in the day. Time in the world is not, and I understand that shit. Like like I said, my mother, my mother, and her siblings, 
at, at 21 years old, all of our kids were tight. But as we started getting older, it was my mother and her kids and her grandkids. It's under, it's called life. Like I said, I feel the same way. I love all my cousins and everything, but I understand life. When we get together, it's fun. And that's all it should be. It should be always just fun when we get together. But um, do better for the next generation, everybody. Just do better for the next exactly. generation. Exactly. For your, for your kids, wrap- and you do better for them. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up on that. All right? Enjoy y'all Sunday. Peace. I'll wait for it. <laughs> yeah, you know he couldn't do it without it. <laughs>